All right, welcome to the third Sesame video tutorial. In this tutorial, uh, we're going to go over some of the linear modeling based framework for analyzing differential DNA methylation. So let's first get started by loading the needed packages. These are library Sesame library summarize experiments as well as library tidyverse. You may also want to check the Sesame version by package version Sesame. And you can see that in this video, we, I'm using Sesame version 1.11.9. So let's first load up the example data we are going to use by SE equal to um, Sesame data, data get MM285 20K times 467 SE. And if you just type SE in a console, you can see that this is a summarized experiment uh, object that contains 467 mouse samples on a subset of 20,000 probes. You can extract the relevant sample metadata from the column data slot of the summarized experiment object. This is by meta equal to dplyr select as table code data SE I that sex age string tissue and type meta in the console and you can see that sex age string and tissue are the four predictors we'll use in this exercise and then three of them are nominal variables namely sex string and tissue and the age is a continuous variable before we start modeling we might want to consider converting the nominal variables that are currently represented as the characters into factors. This is needed because internally, when R performs linear modeling, it uses the treatment encoding by default. In other words, it considers one of the levels for each nominal variable as the reference level and contrasts every other level with the reference. So when the variable is a character variable, that reference level is determined based on uh, the alphabetic order, which might not be the most desirable choice. Therefore, we may want to explicitly turn the character variable into factors and override the default. So let's set our reference level for each nominal variable. So we'll use female as the reference level for sex by meta sex equal to re-level factor meta sex ref equal to female. And likewise, we'll use the C57 black 6J as the reference level for string. This is by meta string equal to re-level factor meta string. And then ref equal to C57 black 6J. And finally, we'll consider colon as the reference level for tissue. There's no particular reason. Uh, we just pick one tissue as the reference. We do uh, factor uh, tissue and ref equal to colon. All right, let's verify all the settings by third meta. And then you can see that all the nominal variables are turned into factors with the designated reference. The next check we'll do before performing the actual modeling is to make sure every level contains non-NA data for all the probes. Let's first extract the data matrix by betas equal to assay SE. And we'll want to make sure that uh, for each of the three nominal variables, there is at least one non-NA values for each level. For example, imagine that you are comparing male and females. It doesn't make sense if one of the sexes ha has all NA reading. So this is this this can be done uh, by this can be done by OK one equal to check levels betas meta sex. Let's see some OK one, and then you can see there are nineteen thousands that have passed this check. 
Let's also spot check some of the failed pros by betas, which not OK1, and then 1. And you can see this pro failed because it has NA in all the samples. And let's do the same for the other variables by OK2 equal to check levels, betas, meta, string, and OK3 equal to check levels, betas, meta, tissue. And finally, let's filter probes based on all three indicators by betas equal to betas, OK1, and OK2, and OK3. Now let's take a look at the shape of the final uh, beta by dim betas. And you can see that we are left with about uh, 17,000 variable, viable probes. And now we can um, perform linear modeling of the data, and this is done by summary equal to DML function betas, and we're going to specify the predictors, which are sex, age, string, and then tissue. Meta equal to meta, and MC cores equal to 4. So we're going to use 4 cores to, um, for the regression. So this might take a while to complete. After this is done, you can type summary into the console. And you can see that the DML function has successfully returned an object of the class uh, uh, DML summary. And internally, DML summary object is a wrapper for the list of uh, model finning summary uh, objects as would have been returned by the LM function. For those who are familiar with the R linear modeling, you could inspect this list element simply by typing summary uh, 1. And you can also extract the test results as a data frame using rest equal to summary extract test and summary. As you can see, this is uh, the function returned a simple data frame. And uh, you can look at the size of the data frame by dim rest. And you can tell the test result is essentially a data frame of 17,000 rows. Each represents a tested probe. It also has 112 columns. Each represent the test statistics. From the code names rest, you can see that there are four groups of test statistics. And then the ones that starts with the EST stand for the slope coefficients. And the ones that starts with the PVAL stand for the statistical significance of testing the slope. The columns that starts with the FPVAL is the statistical significance of uh, running the F-test, comparing a full model against a reduced model with the target's predictor held out. And then eventually, we also have the, uh, the F, EFF, which stands for the effect size for each predictor. Now we have the test results. We can begin to investigate some um, biological questions. The first question we're going to ask is, what are the CPGs whose DNA methylation is most associated with age? So we can study this by uh, res pipe it to arrange est age and then select sh pval age and then tail. And you can also check the most inversely associated uh, pros by uh, the same commands, but instead of uh, looking at the tail, you look at the head. And then we can also plot out the association using ggplot, as will be done by ggplot table beta values equal to beta. And let's pick a probe. And then h, h equal to meta h, aes, h, beta value.
We're going to do geom point and then geom smooth method equal to lm. OK, so this is betas instead of beta. So you can see that this pr uh, probe is uh, uh, inversely associated with age. And the next question we'd like to ask is, what are the CPGs that are most differentially methylated between the two sexes? And this can be done by res pipe 2 arrange as sex male, and then pipe it to select as sex male, pval sex male and head. And we can also plot a volcano plot that shows uh, both the effect size and the statistical significance. And this is by with res plot s male minus log 10 pval sex male and x lab equal to delta beta and then we also use a y lab equal to minus log 10 p value. And then you can see the volcano plot here. And we could also inspect the chromosome location of the most uh, sex associated CPGs detected. And this is by piping the test results into attached manifest uh, function, which will give us the, the chromosome location. And this will be done by um, results, filter. Let's only look at the most significant hits. And then we're going to use uh, 0.1 for the threshold for the effect size and uh, 0.01 for the threshold of uh, p-value. Row name to column name to column pro. ID attach manifest with table seek names. So you could see that most of the sex-associated CBGs are either located in X and Y chromosomes. And this is consistent with our knowledge that the sex chromosome methylation is a key feature for distinguishing uh, ma male and females. Third question we are asking is, what are the CBGs that are tissue-specific in DNA methylation? Notice that now we are testing the tissue predictor as a whole instead of uh, testing a specific contrast. So this can be done by looking at the F statistic. And in this case, we'll do res pipe 2 filter f tissue. Again, we'll use 0.1 as the threshold for effect size, and then 0.01 as the threshold for p-value. Arrange if tissue select. F tissue and F P val tissue. Now you can see the probes that are mostly tissue specifically methylated. And we can also study uh, which tissue has the most loss of methylation. But first, we need to rescale the slope coefficients and add back the reference tissue. And this is by with ref equal to res select starts with s tissue mutate s tissue column because we know that tissue column is the reference and we're going to set it to zero. And next, we're going to subtract each slope by the uh, uh, probe medium. 
and this is by apply with ref subtracted by apply with ref row wise medium and then column wise we're going to count the number of times that the pro uh, the, the, the probe is uh, hypermethylated. We use negative 0.3 as the threshold. And we can plot out directly on top of this by making a bar plot and last equal to 2. Now you can see, uh, for example, the placentas and the testes are the amount of tissues that are most hypomethylated. And lastly, I want to show you how to merge differentially methylated CPGs into differentially methylated regions, or DMRs. To do that, we need to first pick a specific contrast. A contrast is basically a pair of levels that would li you would like to compare. And for example, uh, this can be male versus female. And you can find all the contrasts uh, using DM contrast summary. And here I'm going to use tissue stomach as an example. And since we know that the reference is a tissue column, we are essentially looking for differentially methylated region between column and stomach. And this is done by merged equal to DMR betas. We also need summary as well as the name of the contrast stomach. And we can take a look at the merged data frame. And then you can see that after merging, we get another data frame. In this data frame, each row is still a probe, uh, but we also have additional columns that describe how probes are merged into segments. Multiple probes can be on the same segments if two probes are consistently methylated or unmethylated. The merged segments are sorted by segment p-values and segment starts and end positions. And for this, this example, we haven't seen many probes got merged due to the sparse representation of the array. Let's, let's try to detect differentially methylated regions between the two sexes. Merged equal to DMR. Again, betas, summary, in this case, sex, male. Let's take a look at the merged. And now you can see that indeed we have some segments that span multiple CBGs. So this is all I like to cover in this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about how Sesame can be used to infer metadata of a sample.